All right, so let's talk about this Steven Strasburg deal. Seven years, 245 million. We're gonna talk about what it has to do now has to do with Garrett Cole, Madison Baumgartner. We'll talk about a couple other things that happened in the MLB today. But the big thing, Steven Strasburg record deal. This is insane. We're gonna talk about if it's a good deal, bad deal, what I think about it for the Nationals. We'll talk about it. But before that, if you enjoyed today's video, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And as always, in the comment section, get involved today. Let me know what you think about this deal. Is it a good deal? Do you think it's too much money? As a Nationals fan, do you think it's a good thing? Do you think he should have went after Rendon instead? Let's let's talk about this. So, top left corner, or top right corner actually, my most recent video. Go and give it a watch if you haven't already. And in the description are all my social media, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff. Go and give him a follow if you haven't. So, now we'll actually talk about this. Seven years. 245 million, 35 million a year. I know there's there's been a couple tweets or some news going around that they're deferring, I think, 80 million of the contract. So yeah, there's some deferment. You don't have to pay it right away, but still. 35 million a year. So a guy that's gonna go out there every fourth or fifth day for you, depending, is going to be getting paid 35 million dollars a year, which is insane. And it's crazy because I understand nowadays pitchers are kind of a luxury you need to have good pitchers and top pitchers are a luxury not every single team has a top pitcher a lot of teams don't it's crazy and you know it's crazy to think about so the nationals went out and made sure that they got not only max scherzer now they have they already had him they have patrick corbin and now they lock down steven strasburg again so opting out of this deal he's making an extra 145 million that he wasn't going to make on his original deal. So Steven Strasburg's getting paid, but I think for the Nationals, I think this was a little bit of an overspend. This basically now rules out Anthony Rendon because you already know he's a top positional player in free agency. He's going to get top dollar. So you can't afford to pay two top free agents top dollar. And when you're looking at Bryce Harper, he's kind of the benchmark now for top free agents getting paid a lot. And then Mike Trout's obviously like way up here. So he deserves to get paid. But pitchers are now at the point where they're a guy that goes out there every fifth day and they're getting paid absolutely insane, like just more, just more than ever. And like I mentioned, it's it's great. They deserve to be paid more than ever. They're a luxury. You like you need good pitching. But let's take a look at Strasburg's stats and let's let's see why he got what he did. So Strasburg last year had a 3.32 ERA. His whip sat at just above a one and he pitched 209 innings, which is crazy. So you can see he's a workhorse. He's going to get you those innings. And not only is he going to get you those innings, he's going to give you consistency. He's going to perform at a top level every single time he gets out on the mound. So even though when he first came in the league, he had Tommy John, he had those elbow issues. He's way past that. He's been in the league 10 years now. You're looking at an ERA at 3.17, a 2.96, no, a 1.0. 8-6 whip and you know with Steven Strasburg he's a top pitcher he's going to give you quality performances every single time he steps on the mound and that's that's why the Nationals paid him the way they did he's a top pitcher and when you look at the one two three in the rotation of the Nationals it's one of the best in baseball Scherzer Strasburg Patrick Corbin and then it's rounded out with Annabelle Sanchez Joe Ross Voth or Fatty. So you got, you know, a couple different options for that four and five spot, but that one, two, three is unbelievable. And that's part of the reason why they were able to win a world series this year. The thing I just really don't like about this deal is it is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. You still have a lot of holes in the bullpen. So what are you going to do? Are you going to just look for budget options and hope they work out? Are you going to look at veterans who are willing to take a league minimum? What are you going to do to bring back those players? You still have that third base hole that Rendon has left. Are you going to go in Josh Donaldson? There have been some rumors that they're looking at that. But even then, Josh Donaldson is probably, what, the second best third baseman in free agency. He's going to want a decent chunk of money. Can they afford to do that? Still bring in bullpen options. And then I know Zimmerman's their first baseman, but he's kind of aging. They're going to need someone to help out there too. Are they going to be able to have the depth for infield? Are they going to be able to bring in bullpen help? And then they, are they going to be able to have you know, just good enough depth in case of injuries or anything that happens. So for me, I think it's a good deal for the Nationals bringing back one of their two like free agents that happened, Rendon or Strasburg. In this case, it's Strasburg. I just think it's a lot of money. And that's why I'm like, 
on the fence about it. I think it's a good deal to bring him back. I just think it's a lot, a lot of money. And I understand he's a top pitcher in baseball and top pitchers in baseball are getting paid a lot. Even top players in baseball are getting paid a lot. And I just feel like it's just so much money, especially for a guy who's not out there every single day. I understand paying Bryce Harper a lot. He's out there every day. Mike Trout, he's out there every single day. But a pitcher that's out there every fifth day, it's just, it's a lot of money. And that's tough for me to be able to be like, yeah, let's throw him a blank check, whatever you want, come into the club. So for me, I understand he's crazy good. I just, whew, it's a lot of money. So for me, I'm on the fence about it. And I see why the Nationals did it. But now you got to think about, whoa, what's Garrett Cole going to make? That is a crazy thing because Garrett Cole has had no injury history. There may be some small tweaks here and there, some small issues. But let's take a look at his stats. So last year, he had a 250 ERA. His whip sat at 0.895. Yikes. Holy cow. 0.895 he pitched 212 innings the year before he pitched 200 innings and the year before that he pitched 203 this guy's a workhorse he's two years younger than Strasburg there's been rumors that he was sitting around the same kind of contract offer already but Strasburg's a little bit older now you got to expect that Garrett Cole is going to have to be paid more than 245 million that's crazy to think about a younger pitcher no injury history he's coming off the best year of his career coming off probably the two best years of his career he's been consistent for three four years now like showing quality pitching yikes whoever signs Garrett Cole is going to pay a crazy amount of money and for me again that's a lot of money when you have other positions that you need to fill and I understand in baseball really all that matters is does do teams really want to go over the luxury tax are they willing to spend that money and you know some teams are some teams aren't but it's, I think this kind of rules kind of goes to the point that I feel like Garrett Cole is going to the Yankees at this point because they're really the only ones that are going to be willing to spend that kind of money for Garrett Cole. Unless Garrett Cole feels like he wants to take a pay cut to go work, go to a team or take a pay that's similar to Strasburg to go to a team because he feels like, you know, maybe that's just a different feeling. Like he wants to go to the Angels because he wants to work for Madden for some reason. Whatever it is, I feel like Cole's about to get paid. And I feel like Strasburg just gave Cole a bigger payday. Like, are we looking at a $300 million contract? Are we looking at a $320 million contract? Are we looking at more? Who knows? But I think Garrett Cole is about to make a crazy amount of money. And it's just mind-blowing to me. And I think that's the, the biggest thing for me. It's a lot of money. It's mind-blowing. So, that's kind of the big things. And there's now you got to think about Madison Bumgarner, too. Because he's saying he wants at least nine figures so he wants at least a hundred million because he saw that zach wheeler is getting a hundred million well i've proven that i've been a better pitcher than zach wheeler throughout my career i want more than you know i want more than what he's making so zach wheeler's getting paid you got steven strasberg getting paid you got garrett cole about to be paid and now bump garner is wanting over a hundred million for a contract which is insane so it's going to show that the market for pitchers if you want a top pitcher you're gonna have to open up that checkbook which is again insane madison baumgartner again has been a very very good pitcher throughout his career and he's a lefty too so you know that kind of helps him out not as many good lefties in the market but what 100 million for madison baumgartner i mean it's kind of understandable zach wheeler kind of set that market for him but the teams that were kind of expected to sign Bumgarner, are they going to be willing to pay $100 million for him? The Twins, the Reds, the White Sox. Are they going to be willing to pay for you know $100 million for Madison Bumgarner? So again, I feel like Strasburg has set a benchmark. Zach Wheeler set a benchmark for these pitchers. Now it's like, are these other pitchers going to expect more? And now it's going to hurt their value because now teams are going to be like, I don't want to pay that much. You can go sign with a different team. Or is it going to help them? like Garrett Cole I think it definitely helped him I think he's gonna pay get paid a lot so that's enough for the pitchers I think we've covered everything there really the only other thing that I wanted to talk about was Francisco Lindor doesn't look like he's gonna be traded it looks like the Indians are gonna hold off at least one more year at least that's what the rumor is which I guess I kind of understand that you want to hold on to your top player and really the only way you're gonna trade it is if someone's willing to just open up you know the book and be like here pick whatever you want you can have it just give us Lindor so that that kind of makes sense you know teams don't really want to 
you know, trade their best player unless they really have to, unless they're given way more than they expected. And for Lindor, he's still got another year after this season of team control. So it kind of makes sense. And maybe by then the Indians would be willing to open up the checkbook and pay him to stay with the team. So Lindor doesn't look to be traded, but maybe someone's going to offer him a crazy deal. And then the Indians be willing to part with their, their star player. And then finally, that kind of works with the shortstop market a bit. And Didi Gregorius is being rumored to be, you know, fetching somewhere between 14 and 15 million a year. You know, for me, I think that's a little bit too much. You know, Didi Gregorius, yes, he's good. Yes, he's been a very consistent shortstop for the past couple seasons. But you got to think he's a lefty hitter hitting inside of Yankee Stadium, where we all know that that right field is way shorter than it says it is. So is he going to be able to be, is he going to still show that same power outside of Yankee Stadium? Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm joking a bit, but I think 14 to 15 million for Didi, who's 30 years old, I think it's, it's a little bit, a little bit too much, you know, but you know, maybe the Reds would be willing to go after him. Maybe the Phillies would be able to go after him. So I still think he has a market. He's one of the top shortstops available. And there are teams that are in the market for a shortstop. So I definitely think that there, there will be a team that goes out and tries to sign Didi. But that that's just my take on it. I think 14, 15 million is just a little bit too much. But for me, I'm usually overcritical. And that's why I'm saying, you know, this Strasburg deal, I think it was a bit of an overspend. I think going after Garrett Cole for more than 245 million is going to be a bit of an overspend. And you look at, you know, Mad Bum asking for 100 million. And, you know, I understand that Mad Bum, Garrett Cole and Strasburg are all great pitchers. Some of the best, you know, for the past couple seasons. I'm just I'm just super overcritical. And I'm looking at it like is it really worth going out and paying that crazy amount of money when you could take you know you could shed off probably 100 million and still pick up a really good pitcher when you're looking at the contract of strasburg so i get it you want to get the best pitchers available but for me i'm just a little bit more like critical about things and that's why i say what i do so i hope you enjoyed today's video my take on why I'm still kind of hesitant with this Nationals deal with Strasburg. It's great for Strasburg. It shows, you know, people want top pitchers and they're willing to pay top pitchers top dollar for them. But who knows? So if you enjoyed it, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And as always, guys, let me know in the comment section what you thought about this deal. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. There's going to be two videos on screen now. My most recent video and also a video that YouTube recommends you check out. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.